Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Telus Principle 2, the only series where we laugh in the face of translucent purple screens. The uh, jury is still out on translucent blue screens though. So we are here in West 1, the Western Delta, and uh, this episode is brought to you by getting things over and around purple screens. Um, I'm going to be showing off a few different ways of doing that in this episode. And we will also be letting one of our companions help us solve a puzzle. I'm uh, very excited to get to that. So let's uh, not waste any time here and just jump right into puzzle number two to start out. So what we need to do is just get that platform right there to the very end of its track. And we're going to do that by powering everything with a red laser here. I don't mind these uh, moving platforms as puzzle elements, but it is kind of annoying sometimes. I have to just sit here and watch them waddle across the uh, screen slowly. All right, now that it's the end, of, now that it's at the end of the track, uh, let's just use the connector to get inside here. We're gonna grab the box and jump up on top of the wall, just like that. And we're gonna get up here and drop that outside the wall, and solve the puzzle. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab the box and take it all the way over to puzzle number seven for later. And we're just going to leave it right over here on the left side of the puzzle. And then we're going to hop into 7 for just a minute here. Uh, we just need to turn this pillar up here blue, which we can do with this laser source. Alright, and let's head on over to number 1 next. Alright, so the first way that you can get things through a purple screen is uh, if they just didn't make it big enough. And what I mean by that is uh, this little model here that covers the screen is not quite long enough, and they left a tiny little gap here. So we can just pop the thing right through just like that. And we're going to take this up on top of this platform here that has one of those uh, hand scanners. And we're going to connect it to the blue laser that we just set up in puzzle number 7. And we're going to connect it here to the receptacle in number one, and also there's a receptacle way down there in puzzle number three as well that we're going to connect to. Just like that. Now inside number one, we're just going to move this connector out of the way so that the platform can get onto the button there and let us in. And once we get in here, the path is clear all the way to the end. Alright, and then we're going to run on over to puzzle number three next, with that blue laser going into it. Okay, and with that already open, uh, we can just connect that to here, sneak it under that laser just like that. And then using this connector, we're going to open the end using the inverter's red laser. And this one is all done as well. Alright, so the next puzzle we're going to solve is number 7, uh, but we're going to have to head over to number 4 first and do a little bit more setup. Alright, so we need to do about half of number 4 just to get all the prerequisite... Bleh, get all of the prerequisite items out of here. So we're just going to open that blue thing here to get the box out. We're going to keep moving this over onto the button. Alright, then we're just going to that one. Connect that to that using the box. And that lets us get this fan blade here. Alright, so the second way I've found to get things through purple screens. If you take a box and put it on top of a fan, you'll notice that the box really does not want to be on top of the fan. Um, so we're going to use that to our advantage and put the fan right up against a barrier. And it's not going to quite push the box through the barrier, uh, but it will cause it to collide with the barrier in a weird way that lets us just grab it through the outside. And I missed that one, so let's try one more time. Yep, just like that. And we're going to take this and we're going to run it over to number 7 as well. Yep, 
Now we're just going to run to the left side where the other box is, and we're going to hop up on top of the wall and bring both boxes with us inside the puzzle. There's one and two. So we're going to carry them both over around the corner here. We're going to put one on top of that. And we're just going to put the second one right about there for now. That should work. And we just need to make this accumulator red. And we're going to connect it here. And it's not going to make it blue because as soon as we put it on the button, it's going to release that red laser and everything turns red. Just like that. And we'll use that to move the platform here. And we're just going to want it right up against that barrier. Perfect. And then we'll just take a box with us and solve the puzzle. Now before we leave, I do want to turn this accumulator red. Sorry, blue. Tell me there we go. What impact do you think the megastructure will have on the future of this island? If it stays out and then of the next, control, we're just going to get everything down. back out of the puzzle, and the way we're going to accomplish that... Uh, I think I've done this in a previous episode before, but if you put this right on top of the pedestal, uh, normally it doesn't let you jump on top of it because you're on the pedestal where jumping is disabled. Uh, but if you take another box and put it next to the pedestal, uh, you can jump on that box no problem. So we're just going to drop all three items here outside the puzzle. Just like that. And then while we're in the area, let's uh, go over and get number eight since it's right next door. So for this one, we're not going to be putting anything through a purple screen, uh, but it is kind of thematically similar. Uh, so this drillable wall right here, um, there's a tiny little crack right next to it. And just like before, we can just fit something through the crack. So we're going to put that teleporter right there on the ground and teleport through it. No driller necessary. And then we can hop up into this corner and put it up on top of the wall. And that lets us teleport up here, and we can just jump over and solve this puzzle. Okay, let's head back to number seven. Um, we are going to grab all of those other items, and we're going to bring them over to puzzle number four. So give me just a couple of minutes, and I'll get all those moved. Where is number seven? This way. Alright, and here we are. I really wish 1k was able to carry more than one box at once. Uh, but anyway, we're just going to hop over here, and we're going to jump up on top of the wall. And we only need one box back in here. Alright, so the next way we're going to kind of sort of get things through a barrier. Um, it's going to be an open barrier this time, which sounds weird. Uh, basically our goal here is to open this gate and then open that gate with the same accumulator. Uh, the problem is it doesn't let us just grab this through this gate uh, because it knows that as soon as we grab it, the gate will turn off. Uh, and it obviously will not let us grab it through the closed gate. So when I click here, it's actually going to force me to walk through the barrier before it'll let me pick it up. Just like that. And then obviously we can't walk back through it. Uh, so we're going to outsmart that system. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, using this fan again. Uh, if you put a fan on top of a box... Uh, the fan's hitbox might collide with something that's right up next to the box, and thus it's going to push that item away. Uh, similar to what it did with the box over there. So you'll see, as soon as I put this down, it's going to push that accumulator back out of the way. Just like that. And if we keep doing that just a couple of times, it'll actually push it... I'll do it one more time just to be safe. It'll actually push it past the barrier, and then we can just walk inside and grab it, and then use it to open this one. I'm 
very happy with that solution. Uh, that was very satisfying to figure out. Uh, so let's just move these back here, uh, just because we're going to need them just a little bit later. Excuse me, I was looking at your research log, and I. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go do number six next. And that's this way. All right, and uh, what we're going to be doing for this puzzle is getting this connector through this purple gate. And the way we're going to do it for this one, uh, actually we're getting it over the gate more than through. Uh, but we're just going to put it on top there. And items that are on top of moving platforms will not go through purple barriers, uh, even though the platform itself does. So you'll see as it starts to move, it's going to try to push it off just like that. Uh, but then we can just hop right up on here and just kind of grab it over the barrier like that. And now that that's out, it's going to be very simple to solve the puzzle. Uh, so we just need to connect that to that, and we are done. Okay, and with that done, uh, we're going to do the Southern Lost puzzle next, uh, but we're going to have to go back to four to get a box. And that's going to be that direction. Okay, so the thing with this one, um, it has a teleporter, and we've established that the way that teleporters work is that as soon as you leave the puzzle, um, whether that is by passing through the purple screen to leave or by jumping out over the walls, uh, you kind of leave the active area of the teleporter and it will disable it. But this puzzle is kind of unique in that the area around the puzzle uh, that activates the teleporter is much, much larger than the puzzle. And uh, every puzzle up until now, uh, that area has literally covered only the inside of it. Um, so as soon as you jump out over the wall, it'll disable the teleporter. Uh, but for some reason, for this one, uh, you can see you can go quite a ways before it'll disable the teleporter. You have to get, yeah, about right here, which I don't know why that area is so big. And then obviously if you walk out through the purple screen, it'll also disable it. But, uh... We're going to use that discrepancy to our advantage, and we're just going to jump out and grab this box here. And that still lets us teleport back up here. And then we're just going to use that to solve the puzzle. Just like that. We're going to put the box on there, because if the box is down here, uh, it actually doesn't give us enough height to be able to jump up there. So we'll just do that and grab that, teleport back up. And there we go, that one is solved. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, do the Eastern Lost puzzle next. And to do that we're going to just bring this box back with us. And we're going to bring it back to number 4. I'm um, going to have to get the fan and a box out of there and bring them both over to the other Lost puzzle. So let me do that and I'll meet you there. We're actually going to get a couple of items out of four um, before we're done with it. So the same thing that we did to get the uh, accumulator through the wall here using that fan on top of the box. Uh, we're going to do the same thing to get it through this purple barrier here. And similarly to when we did the uh, fan bump with the box, it's not going to push it through the barrier, but it does kind of push it up against it in such a way that lets us grab it through. Uh, might take a few attempts here because this one is a little bit more touchy. But if we just do that a couple of times. There we go, we got it. And we're just gonna leave this out here. We will need it a little bit later, um, but we are gonna get this fan out of the puzzle. And we're gonna do something pretty similar to what we did in puzzle number six, uh, just by kind of tossing it right over. Um, the interesting thing is if you use two boxes like this, uh, you cannot actually place it outside the puzzle. You see, I can't really get a camera angle that lets me put it on top of the box, however, if we put it on the box inside, um, we can just hop up on here, and that does let us grab it. Just like that. 
All right, so I'm gonna take this and that box up here to the lost puzzle, which I think is this one right here. Um, so give me a minute to do that. All right, and then we're just gonna once again fan bump that box right through the barrier here. Just like that. And we're just gonna skip this entire puzzle and just jump right up here and solve it. All right, and that leaves only one more puzzle. And as I alluded to before, this one we're gonna use the help of one of our companions. I don't think I need that fan, but I'll leave it there just in case. So for this one, we're gonna need somewhere between three and five connectors. Uh, we already got one out of its puzzle in number four here. Uh, I'm going to go over to number one and I'm gonna get the other connector out of that puzzle. And we're gonna bring it over and we're gonna kind of get them all together and put them near number five. We're just gonna repeat that trick that we used with the other connector and just push it right through this crack here. All right, and let's take this to five. Now this one we are going to leave, we're gonna first connect it to that uh, connector that's right inside the puzzle and we're gonna leave it right about here. And then we're gonna go back to number Let's do puzzle number six next. Where's that at? Right there. We're gonna get the other connector out of this puzzle. Actually gonna get both of the connectors out of this puzzle. And we're just gonna move this over to the end so we can do the same thing we did in puzzle number two and just kind of jump right over the wall with it. And that should be about good right there. And then this one, we want to connect to this one and take it right down into the woods here. And we'll uh, tweak the positions of all of them, all of them in just a minute. Um, let's go back to number four and grab that one that we left outside there. And this one we're going to put right over here-ish. And then let's go to the southern lost puzzle right down here. And we're going to get probably, hopefully, our final connector that we need. Grab that, teleport up, and jump out. Alright, and then this final one here, we're going to connect to this uh, receptacle that's way down in there, right there. We're going to connect it to this other one. We're going to put it right about here. We want it somewhere it's not going to slide around, and that looks pretty stable there. So let's just move this over. All right, and then the last thing we have to do is just uh, get these to connect. Uh, let's go inside here and set up this laser first. So we want to connect it to that and that. We'll leave it right about there. That looks like it might do the trick. That looks like it's almost going to work. Um, Alcatraz is not supposed to be standing here, so let me see if I can get him to move at all. Because that's going to be a problem if he doesn't. All right, can you please move, Alcatraz? 
Alright, hopefully he moves on his own in a minute. Um, let me go fix this other laser here. Okay. So that's all working. Um, let me just go check if any of these robot dudes are moving around at all. Okay, yes, looks like they are, so we should still be able to do this. Uh, so let me run back to number five real quick and show you what's going on here. Okay, so the thing with number five is uh, you want this laser to power this receptacle to close there, open this gate, but that will turn off the fan here. Um, so what we want to happen is for the laser to turn off momentarily so that the gate closes and the fan turns on and throws us all the way over this wall here to the end. Uh, and normally you do that by using this platform here that moves back and forth, and that can block the laser temporarily. Um, but we're going to use a companion to do that instead. Uh, so we are going to just follow uh, whoever that was I saw in the distance a minute ago. But uh, we're going to wait for him to go all the way up the hill there. And once he hits this uh, sharp turn right here, it gives us about 30 seconds until he hits the laser. So let me just go back and follow him real quick. Alright, now as he makes his turn right about here, that gives us about 30 seconds on the clock to get into position, which should be plenty of time. Alright, and then we just sit here and we wait for it to happen. Yes! <laughs> I knew that would work. Oh, I was getting worried there for a minute. It took a bit longer than I expected it to. Oh, I think that's my favorite solve of the series so far. I still don't know what's up with Alcatraz and why he's just sitting up there not moving. Oh. That was actually Alcatraz that blocked that. Because Yakut just made it there as soon as we got there. That's really weird. I wonder why Yakut took so long to get up there. Eh, I don't care. It worked. Okay, so with all of that done, uh, let's go ahead and get our sparks next. And the first one is going to be about this direction from number five. Yep, so it should be right across the uh, ridge here. Yep, right there. So there's our first one, and then to get to the next one, we're going to go almost straight west, and it's going to be on the other side of the island, so I will meet you there. Alright, the other one should be right about here. Let me just look at my little map here. Okay, so it is... Just about straight west from number 8. God, this place is a nightmare to navigate. Okay, so here's number 8, and it's going to be just a little bit north of straight east, so it should be right over here. No, nope, because that's number 7. West, not east. Let's go back to number 8. <laughs> There it is. I don't know why that was so hard to find. Alright, and with that done, uh, right around the corner, right next to this uh, gold puzzle there, uh, we are going to find a key. What is the key to? Well, we'll find out. Alright, for the next one, we need to go around the other side of the gold puzzle here. Yeah, 
And right around the corner here, uh, there is a little banana with a smiley face. Apparently this is from a game called My Friend Pedro. I don't really know anything about the game, so I will just uh, take TJM, TJM's word for that. But anyway, uh, with that done, let's go on northeast-ish to the next one. Alright, and right here, uh, there is a hat that says Paranormal Investigator on it. Uh, this hat belongs to a character from Serious Sam 4 called Daniel Carter, I believe. I think that's at least the second reference to a Serious Sam 4 character that we've seen, because we had the guitar in one of the northern areas as well. Uh, but anyway... Let's go northeast to the next one. And right outside of the lost puzzle over here, uh, up on top of a tree, we will find a birdhouse. Nothing super fancy, just a birdhouse. Okay, it's going to be a bit of a walk to the next one. We need to go to the, not the Lost Puzzle that's right here, but the other one way on the other side of the map. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a hike. Alright, and right around the corner here on the back side of this puzzle, uh, there's a Lost Hologram, whatever you want to call these things, of a telegra uh, telegram, a terminal from the first game. They were all over the place. Uh, I completely forgot about the last easter egg, uh, so I'm just going to cut that in real quick right here. Uh, so if we follow the shoreline around this way, we will find a use for that key we found earlier. And it is a treasure chest. And there's a whole bunch of gold bars in there. You can actually pick them up and it makes you walk noticeably slower, even when sprinting. Uh, and you can just put them right back in the chest and you go back to full speed. It doesn't actually change anything visually. It's not like you're carrying him or anything, but uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, back to your regularly scheduled Easter egg hunt. Okay, that leaves us with only one more Easter egg left. Uh, bonus points if you can guess what it is. Uh, but we will need to go to the tower and solve the Tetramino bridge first, so let me do that. Okay, to get to this one, we just need to do a bit of a jumping puzzle here. We need to jump over to that little bit of concrete, and then run over here, and then climb up this wall right here. And that lets us get up and... Oop, come on. Oh, it's this way. Let's us get up and over here, and if we jump down behind this wall, we will find the kitty face. Obviously, that was the last one. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do this with style. Let's hop up here. Oh, that's not going to work. Hop back up here. And if we climb this all the way up, we can actually get, um, definitely not on top of the tower. God, no. But, uh, up on top of this little observation deck here. Where do I want to jump from? Just like that. Okay. Gets us uh, quite a nice view over the area, and you can see all of our lasers just kind of haphazard, haphazardly just flying all over the place, as is standard for this series, of course. Okay. Well, with that view out of the way, um, let's just go ahead and get the tower done, and I will meet you all the way on the other side as we enter West 2. Alright, and as we enter a new area, as usual, that is our cue to end off this episode. Um, thank you if you've made it this far through the series so far. It's been a blast so far, and I've really been enjoying making it. 
Uh, if you have any feedback or anything to say, just uh, leave a comment. I love reading comments every time somebody leaves one. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, meet us next time as we tackle West 2 Anthropic Hills. Peace. Um, we're going to do a little bit of mountain climbing, the likes of which we have not seen since uh, South 1. Thankfully, this one is going to be a little bit of a shorter route. These jumps are a little bit precarious. Uh, if we fall down there, it's, well, 